Hello and welcome to another Balblog Garden Diary walk. It's just the beginning of August and at this time the garden's again another transitional stage when there's much stuff has died down. And at this time of year for colour and everything we're relying on, as I've mentioned before and written about, the self-seeders and many of the plants. And I think of retitling myself, and many of you will probably agree, as the weedy gardener. Because a lot of these are considered weeds by many. But controlled in the garden and grown, they are beautiful. So what about the, here the tansy, you know, a, a noxious field weed if you've livestock, I agree. But in the garden it's so beautiful. It's it's got these vibrant yellow colours. It, it's, it's a plant that attracts almost more pollinators than almost anything else. And it's very valuable. It's got beautiful foliage. Really nice foliage. And these clusters of, of yellow flowers. Which are growing here along with the, the, this, these herbs, mar marjorams. And, that are self-seeding around and linarius and there you can see all these plants attract lots of bees there you can it's blowing in the wind but you can maybe see little carder bees common carder bees they love it and they love these little flowers and the thing about these kind of plants that produce little flowers and cl clusters they flower over a very very long time other plants, like I'll maybe show you later, some of the poppies. The flowers, big and spectacular, but opens and barely lasts a day or two at most. Whereas these, these are these are on the go all the time and, and flower over a very long period. And I was thinking about the bees and why do the bees come to these? Because the the the, the Understanding is the bees, when they find a good pollen source, go back to the hive and communicate with the other bees and tell them there's a great pollen source here and tell them where it is. Well, if you find a big poppy and you go and get it and tell them and the bees head to it and woe and behold when they get there that it's dropped its petals and it's gone, it's not very good. Whereas with these plants and these clusters, you know they're a reliable source of pollen for, for weeks. So yes, I'll own up to being the weedy gardener. Because I think these are underappreciated. As long as you manage them in the garden. You know, I'm not going to allow these to seed. But we will enjoy them. The same with the Linaria. So we've got lots, lots of greenery and stuff dying back. The garden's greener at this, this year than it was last year because despite the searing heat in, in Europe and some countries, we've been under co cool moist conditions which is much more of what we're used to. Down here in the path is one of these very poppies I was telling you about. It's come out. Ironically, right in the middle of the path, which is not ideal, but there we go. The one, one of the things I've done recently is the, the hedges have been clipped, so that's been a big job over the last month and few weeks. And now all that hedge is now lying, shredded, in piles, ready to be spread out as a mulch. It'll just lie it. I used to cart it all up to the top of <coughs> excuse me, the garden to the compost heap and then haul it all back again but as I've got older I'm trying to be more efficient and have to do less of that hard work. So I found that the, at this time of year when we cut it and shred it there are places where there's not much going on and it's down there in, in clumps. As long as I spread it before the autumn bulbs start coming up 
or lay it where I know for sure there's no autumn bulbs. So that's the nature there, but Arisimus foliage is still around. The ovularia, big clump coming right into the path, it's self-seeded and ferns, yes, absolutely. So it, it is actually a quiet time in the garden. And if it weren't for the so-called weeds, the free, the free plants, the volunteer plants, there wouldn't be an awful lot going on. And as I say, it's a time when hedges are cut. We've got the, I'll be trimming back trees and shrubs and doing all the shredding, so an awful lot gets neglected for a bit at this time as I do these annual tasks. Here again you'll find some of the, the beautiful beautiful weeds, the hawk weeds. Well, there's a wee in amongst all this rhododendron cephalanthum producing a, a late flower. It flowers in the in the spring but this when it's moist and that a lot of the ericaceous and rhododendrons will produce a, a few extra flowers at this time of year. But it's just very much there's a lot to do. I see, I, I'm seeing, even as a weedy gardener, I'm seeing a lot of things that I'll need to clear up in the next week or so. But I'm getting much more relaxed about what we allow and what we leave and worrying about weeds. Through here, this is the this bed, this will be a telltale bed, it's just now, it's covered with the, weed, the geranium, the robertianums. And that foliage, it just keeps some ground cover because this is a bed pr primarily for the, the spring bulbs and the autumn bulbs. So at this time of year it would be quite bare. And these weed geraniums are great. The birds love the seeds and, and the so, so they do that and they, they eat the seeds as well, but it's a lovely soft ferny foliage and it doesn't do any harm again. It's, you know, it's not a thuggish type weed, it, it won't stop the other plants coming and it's there in pink and white. So let's just walk back up here. Here's the evidence of the other hedge, my rake out and still stuff lying there waiting for the, I've still to come up and shred this, I've got it cut, this hedge, and starting to gather it and I'll get my shredder out and shred that down as well. And at the same time I'll clear all this, the dicentra has really gone past, and I'll clear all this foliage out. And also it's time to come out and I can see these um, aconites starting to open their seed capsules so it, it's time to come out here and chop, chop this back so it doesn't seed too much. So we do allow a certain amount but we'll control a certain amount as well. More um, arisema of different types all around the garden, the green foliage of different arisemas. And here I see, talking of arisemas, the arisema nepenthoides leaves collapsing and dying down and there a lovely seed capsule of a trillium and ruscoia, some of the big ruscoias, purpurea types and hybrids, they're coming through as well. The earlier flowering riscoyas are in leaf and hopefully some seed will pop up there. So 
So there is a big degree of tidying to be done. We'll just see something else interesting that I should come down and show you. Again, a sign of the season changing is, is always this um, Eucomus bicolor. It, it's, it's quite a stunning plant. I love it at all times of year and it's just appeared over the last two or three weeks and it pushes through and these pineapple type flowers will push up and eventually open into September, October and then the plant will keep going right until the autumn winter frosts will cut it down. Some of the scabious and the smaller varieties and species growing up there. And then talking of weed, another weed I've always given up on the trying to control this little yellow hoxalis. You can spend hours and hours picking it all out and before you know it it's all back. But you know, it's, there's all sorts going on. There's, you know, sort of GM reptans and all these little plants. It doesn't do them any harm. The saxes, they, they grow in harmony. And that's all I ask in the garden, that, that plants get on and grow in harmony and don't... No, no dom, none of them dominate and outgrow to the to hinder or to, to, the, to deter other plants. And these lovely mi little mixtures of ferny foliage, different, different plants, different species, different countries. So this is a native weed type one, Achillea. And I forget the name of this more exotic one. And there's a little potentilla that I collected as a cutting from down at the seaside here in Aberdeen. Lovely wee bottom tell us. And then the cyananthus coming and flowering and it again will flower all the way through. And here's another example here of the, the exotic, so the cyananthus from the Himalayas, the Mechanopsis or Papaver cambricum. And the fever few. What's that tan tanacetum? So it's um, even in, up in these the weeds. Oh, there's trouble going on next door. So let me just um, probably finish there. The um, with the scene again of of the, as the weedy gardener. Without these weeds at this time of year, there wouldn't be much to show you and share. So consider allowing them in, control them, think of them, but realise that all plants deserve a place somewhere and they all provide a valuable resource in the biodiversity of the garden. So thanks for being with me and I'll leave you with the, these, this lovely scene of more of my weeds. Bye for now.